You've suffered a, a great deal of tragedy in your life, um, unimaginable heartache and, and loss. Can you tell us a bit about your story? Well, I've lost a lot of people in my family. I, my immediate family, I lost three sons to drugs, essentially. And uh, I lost my wife to suicide after the loss of my second son. I lost my granddaughter recently to cancer. George boxed professionally from 1956 to 1978 and went toe-to-toe -to -toe with greats like Muhammad Ali. Despite his professional legacy, a string of tragedies would strike in his family beginning in 1985. My fourth son, Jesse, got involved with drugs because of pain. He, he got involved in a motorcycle accident, dirt bike accident, and his, he had uh, his uh, kneecap torn off and my son went to a party one night in East End of Toronto. Complained to someone about the pain in his leg, and in particular someone said, I got something for your pain. And that was my son's introduction to heroin. That was May of 1984, I think. And by the time September of 1984 rolled out, before I found out I had one heroin addict, I had three heroin addicts. My first son actually committed suicide. He took a 22 caliber rifle, lodged it against the roof of his mouth, pulled the trigger, and sealed not only his own fate, but the fate of two of his brothers and his mother. What was it like to have three sons in your home addicted to drugs? Well, you feel helpless. You feel helpless, totally helpless. And then when one dies, one of my first son died, I knew the other two guys were gonna go. George's feeling proved prophetic. In 1993, his son, Georgie Lee, died of a drug overdose. I think the lowest period of my life, the deepest funk I was ever in, was after I lost my second son. My wife had a tough time. When we lost our second son, I knew, I knew she was gonna kill herself. I knew it. Four days later, November the 4th, my wife took her life. And I could see, I could see that uh, she wasn't gonna bounce back. It's hard to lose a son. And I always say for a mother to lose a child, it's gotta be the, it's gotta be the worst thing that ever happened to anybody, for a mother to lose a child. And I know she wasn't going to make it. Tragedy struck again in 1996 when George's son Stephen died of a drug overdose. Then in 2012, his granddaughter Rachel lost her battle with cancer. George says it's his family that keeps him going. I think about my family all the time. I think about my wife, my first wife. I think about my three sons who died. I think about the impact it's had on, our, on the other members of the family. If I was to crumble, if I was to fall to pieces, me, then what would happen? When you were going through depression, what was that experience like? It felt like it was going to be never ending. That's what it felt like. But I was in bed for a month and a half. I just lay there like I was dead. I was, you know, I, I don't remember, I don't remember thinking about hardly anything. I just, just lay there, just like, like, like helpless, like, Without a sense of wanting to live, I just I just lay there, dead. I feel almost almost no emotion, just just like I was dead, but with my eyes open. What did it take to get you out of that depression? Well, you know what I used to do to, to combat to, to feel make myself self feel better to make myself feel better? I go to the gym with my older son, especially, and we'd work out like crazy, fast and furious. I work out with the weights. I feel better. I do that basically every day now. It makes me feel better. It makes me feel better about myself. I, if I'm in half decent shape at 76, it makes me feel good. I say that. You're in pretty darn good shape for 76. <laughs> Thank you. George recently published his memoir, Shavalo, A Fighter's Life. He also spends much of his time on his Fight Against Drugs campaign, taking his message to students across Canada. If my sons died and I couldn't uh, help other people by telling the story, it'd be kind of like my sons died in vain. You know, and I don't want ever to feel that way. I like to feel that because they died, that there's a story there that young people can benefit from, that young people can learn from. And it gives me some ammunition to go around the country to talk to young people, you know, talk to young people and to alert young people about the dangers of drugs. I talk to them about loving their family. I talk to them about, about being happy. The happier you are, the less apt you are to get messed up on drugs. The unhappier you are, easier to get tricked into doing drugs. Somehow thinking life will be easier if you take a drug. 